So I literally just got back from the Apple store and I have not been this excited for a video in a really long time. This is the new 16 inch MacBook Pro. Specifically, this is the one that you might actually buy, right? There's gonna be a lot of reviews, including here talking about the really high end, totally decked out 3000 plus dollar configurations. But this is the base model. You can get this for $24.99 with half a terabyte or $26.99 with a full terabyte. It's got the M1 Pro, 10 cores, 16 core GPU, 16 gigabytes of RAM, no other options. And this is a really important computer because as much as we like to talk about these new MacBook Pros as being professional tools or not for the average person, a lot of people still buy these. Through the design, the display, the pricing, and the marketing, this is targeted to a much broader group of people. And so what I'd like to do in today's video is talk about this as essentially the broadest, the most mass market 16 inch MacBook Pro that's out there. This is the one that people are gonna walk into an Apple store and buy. And so today we're gonna be putting it through its paces in some benchmarks because I know you guys are itching to see some performance and I'm itching to see if this is a good package. So without any further ado, let's get started. We all love the feeling of unboxing a fresh brand new Mac. It's shiny and clean and it runs super fast. But over time, as you live with the device, it tends to clutter up. And that's where today's video sponsor, Clean My Mac X, comes in. It's trusted by millions of users worldwide, including me, because I use it on my personal MacBook Pro. The most popular feature is the Smart Scan, which examines your system to weed out system log files and user cache that is no longer needed. It runs a quick malware check, as well as necessary maintenance scripts to top up performance as well. For example, my smart scan found 27.5 gigabytes of junk files to get rid of from my 256 gigabyte SSD. That's a big difference and it frees up a lot of space. Space Lens is another great feature that allows you to see what files are eating up your storage and the optimization feature gives you a more straightforward look into your system's performance than the built-in activity monitor. Clean My Mac offers a ton of great features to keep your Mac tidy, running well, and free of cryptocurrency miners, viruses, and adware. To try out Clean My Mac X today, check out the link in the description below. And now, back to the video. So while today we're gonna to be looking at the base model 16 inch, I have a ton of comparisons lined up for you guys that you're definitely not gonna to wanna to miss. I've got a base 14 inch coming in to see if the lesser double bin CPU and GPU are still good. I've got a 14 inch that's spec'd out exactly the same as the 16 inch. So we can see if there's performance differences between the two screen sizes. I've got a fully decked out 16 inch coming in. I've got a 24 core M1 Max coming in. There is going to be a lot of comparison. So if you want your questions answered, get subscribed, leave some questions down below. There's gonna be wall to wall coverage on these new things. Everything that you could want to know about these new MacBook Pros, this is the place to find it. So let's stop beating around the bush here. I am more excited to get into this than any MacBook in a really, really long time. I, I'm so curious to see what this looks like in person. When I was in the Apple store, I just walked straight past them. I didn't even wanna look until it was mine. Okay, here we go. Oh, look at that. Obviously, Apple has moved to this paper wrap around the actual MacBook itself. This honestly is huge. One of the biggest problems with MagSafe cables back in the day is how they would like fray and break and you couldn't attach them from the cord. So or the power brick, so you had to get a whole new brick. No longer is that the case. Lots of origami going on here with that paper. I don't think I'll ever be able to get that back in. Uh, one of the big things with these new MacBook Pros is the black Apple stickers. That's how you know you have a professional tool. And then of course we have our monster 140 watt power supply, which actually is not as big as I thought it was gonna be. It's because Apple is using new gallium nitride technology with these things, really nice. I mean, when you look at the comparable Windows laptops with similar type, types of performance, they have absolutely massive or sometimes even two power adapters. So that's another reason why Apple is positioning Apple Silicon as a solution is even if you can't necessarily get better performance than the likes of an MSI GE76 Raider, you can at least do it in 
a nicer package. Okay, let's go ahead and take this thing out of the wrapper. Oh man, look at it. Now we have MacBook Pro embossed on the bottom. I mean, this is no small device. I, <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to, I'm trying to think of stuff to say, but I'm just so happy. Oh, oh, look at it. Oh, this is a magical day. Just looking at the mouse, the ProMotion. Now, what I think is actually super interesting that Apple didn't talk about whatsoever is the treatment that they've done here with the vent. It gets sucked through the fans and it gets blown out the back of the device. But what's interesting about this one is if you look down the screen towards the hinge, they've made a lot more room for that airflow. And that I believe is not something that we had on the 16 inch before. Mmm. When you look down the screen of the 16 inch, you can see, you know, that's where they've got the hinge. But if you look down the screen of the new one, it's all vents. So we've got a lot more airflow. And that's a big deal because with more airflow, it means you don't have to push the fans as fast to get the air out of the case, which contributes to this thing being a lot more silent than the old Intel machines. Oh boy. Oh man. <laughs> wow. Now one thing I am gonna wanna test here is the blooming because I've got the brightness cranked right now. I'm in a high light environment. I'm not seeing anything, but I'm gonna wanna test this in some low light. So let's do that right now. All right, so here we are in a pretty dark setting and I've got the brightness absolutely cranked. If we put this in full screen, you can kind of see a tiny, tiny little bit of a halo around the mouse and around some of these darker UI elements. But the issue is, when we go ahead and play this, right now I'm just absolutely being blinded by this. I have the camera cranked down so it's not completely overexposed. If I put this at a brightness where I would actually watch this content, first of all, it looks really, really good. Honestly, I would be able to be convinced that this is an OLED panel. These blacks are ridiculously good. And over here on this local dimming test, I can sort of see a halo moving around, but that's, again, only when you have a completely black background and a completely white, tiny little dot. I'm not even sure you guys can see this on camera because it's really, really subtle. So, yeah, I think that this is probably the best mini LED display I've ever seen, and it's freaking fantastic. So I know I've been rambling a little bit now about the package, but there's a reason that I put it in this video, and that is this is the cheapest way to get into that. Now, I say cheap, it's not really cheap, it's $2,500, but for that, you get all of the same physical features as the $6,000 MacBook Pro. I'm gonna fill this thing to the brim with some benchmarks and some tests, some real-world applications, and we're gonna find out if the M1 Pro is actually Pro. All right, so welcome back. We've done some benchmarks on the device and I have to say I am really impressed. I keep forgetting that I'm using a base model. This chip is absolutely nuts. Now for today's video, I haven't been able to run through my entire benchmark suite. I have a ton of tests, both synthetic and real world that I'm planning on running on these machines and you're not gonna wanna miss when I compare this base model to a fully loaded out $4,000 M1 Max MacBook Pro. I'm gonna go into a ton of detail. I'm gonna test out high power mode. I'm gonna see why the M1 Max weighs more. We're gonna open it up and see what the internal differences are, as well as more benchmarks. So definitely get subscribed for that comparison. But for today, I've got a pretty good lineup. And while we go through some of the benchmarks that I already ran, we're gonna be running some new benchmarks, specifically real world ones. Now over here in Final Cut Pro, I have this 10 minute 4K 10 bit 60 FPS clip from my Sony A7S III. We're gonna be rendering this in ProRes, which of course should be interesting because we have dedicated ProRes encode and decode hardware here. Now I've already run this test on five other Macs, so we have some things to compare it to. Let's just go ahead and apply a quick color correction here, and then we're gonna start timing it 
to see how long it takes to render this clip. Now, while this is going on, let's talk about some of the synthetic benchmarks that I ran. And we'll start with Geekbench 5, because that's one that a lot of people like to run. For the multi-core test, we saw a pretty impressive result of 12,502, which puts it higher than all of the other Macs, including my 2020 iMac with a 10700K. In the single core for Geekbench 5, as you might imagine, this thing scored pretty much the same as the M1 because they're using the same cores. So that one was pretty much neck and neck and it absolutely smoked all of my Intel Macs. In terms of Geekbench 5 compute, we scored 37,618, which puts it pretty close to the Radeon Pro 5300 in my base model 2020 iMac. This was a bit of an interesting result because I personally don't think that it's a representative of the other benchmarks that I ran. Geekbench compute has definitely been a little bit weird, so I would take this result with a grain of salt. And by the way, all of those were run under metal. So now of course we gotta talk about one of my favorite CPU benchmarks and that is Cinebench R23. This one is a standard and for good reason. Now this is the full 10 core M1 Pro and that means that you should see the same performance whether you spend $2499 on this base model or $6000 on a fully loaded one. And the performance, well, it's really good. We got 12,315 in the multi-core test, which puts it well ahead of the Core i7-10700K 65 watt desktop processor. And let me tell you, when under load, that thing uses a lot more than 65 watts. So this is an absolutely insane number. We're actually not that far off from the 18 core iMac Pro, 18 core. In Cinebench R23 single core, we have similar awe-inspiring numbers. We scored 1533, which beat out the M1 by a little bit, I suspect, because this thing has the cooling to support longer endurance. And we smoked literally everything, everything. One core in this thing is basically as fast as an entire Retina MacBook Pro from like 2014. That's pretty crazy. Okay, I can't believe this. I thought I would have more time, but I only got through a few of my synthetic benchmark numbers and we are almost done here in Final Cut Pro. Hang on a second, we're about to finish. Boom, three minutes and 50 seconds is our time here. That is absolutely insane. Okay guys, my 18 core iMac Pro was over a minute slower than that. I mean, that is ludicrous. This is the base model, and it is over a minute faster in a sub five minute test than my $10,000 iMac Pro. That is nuts. So clearly that's insane, and it's gonna make a huge difference to video editors, but I wanna try a different test that isn't as friendly to Apple Silicon. So this is Blender Classroom. This is a test that I run on a lot of my machines, and even though this is now optimized for Apple Silicon, we're running an Apple Silicon native app, it isn't you know quite as well optimized as something like Final Cut. So let's go ahead and start this render. And while we're doing that, I wanna jump into some other benchmarks that I ran that are, again, not very friendly to Apple Silicon. So first up, we had Nova Bench. This is something that isn't optimized at all. It's running completely through Rosetta, and as such, it is scoring a massive penalty for the M1 Pro. And yet, we saw a score of 2453, which gets really close to the Core i9 in the 15 and 16 inch MacBook Pros that preceded this. And it even isn't that far off from my iMac with a 10700K. Now another test that I ran to see how this thing performs when it's being hampered by lack of optimization was the V-Ray CPU benchmark. Now this is something that really isn't meant to be run on Apple Silicon but the results were definitely surprising. So we scored 7,627, which was pretty noticeably higher than the old 16 inch MacBook Pro and really is not that far behind my iMac with a Core i7-10700K. Now I was able to find some benchmark numbers for the V-Ray CPU test on an Intel machine running a Core i9-11980HK and this is where it gets really, really interesting. With that CPU running in a 45 watt power limit, it was actually beaten by the M1 Pro. 
With the Core i9 allowed to use as much power as it wanted, it did still beat it out, but I think that's a really interesting result because if you confine the Core i9 to 45 watts, which is still 15 to 20 watts more than the M1 Pro is using, the M1 Pro beats it while also being slowed down by running through Rosetta. That is really, really impressive, and it just goes to show how good Apple's performance per watt figures are. Now going on to some GPU tests, I wanted to find out if the M1 Pro with the 16 core GPU was going to be, you know, too slow. In the Basemark GPU test, I was astounded to find a score of 4883, which was higher even than my 2020 iMac with Radeon Pro 5300 graphics, by a lot. It sort of split the difference between the 5300 and the Vega 64 in my iMac Pro. That's a really impressive showing for the base graphics for the 16 inch. Now for another direct comparison to the M1, I wanted to find out how the scaling is, so I ran the 3 d Mark Wildlife Extreme Benchmark. This is a really interesting test because it takes full advantage of Apple Silicon. It's designed to run on iOS and iPadOS, and because Apple Silicon, it can run on Apple Silicon Macs as well. And this one I was really interested by because we scored 10,333 which is more than double what the M1 MacBook Pro with the eight core GPU scored. And that's a really interesting result because it shows us that depending on how you optimize it, you can directly scale and get twice, or in this case, more than twice the performance out of twice the cores. That is super duper impressive. Okay, so the Blender Classroom render has finished. We got a time of eight minutes and 30 seconds. That's a really impressive time. Completely smokes the M1 MacBook Pro, the 15 inch, the 16 inch Intel MacBook Pro, and we're basically tied with the 2020 iMac with a 10700K. Now, in terms of Blender, I did run a couple of other benchmarks to try to get an idea of how this performs in a number of different scenarios. So, in the Blender BMW render, we got a score of 200 seconds, which was significantly lower than all of the other laptops I tested, and again, got really close to the 2020 iMac. And then, really interestingly, when I ran the BMW render using the GPU, it beat everything, including my 18 core iMac Pro. So that was really, really impressive. And then finally, I ran the Mr. Elephant EV test, which gave us a score of 34 seconds, which beat everything except for my iMac Pro. And that is really crazy. The fact that the iMac Pro is up here on these tests and that we are in some cases outperforming it is bananas. You know, a lot of people have been pointing out, oh, well, you're spending $1,000 more than an M1 MacBook Pro to get this thing. Yeah, but this is $8,000 less than my 18 core iMac Pro, and it's comparable. That, that is really, really crazy. Now, I do have a lot more stuff to test here. I've got Photoshop, DaVinci Resolve, some games. There's a lot more that needs to be done to compare this MacBook to other Macs as well as other versions of this new generation of MacBook Pro, but that's a taste of what I've got so far, and I'm unbelievably impressed. This is just the M1 Pro. We haven't even talked about the Macs yet. That hasn't even arrived. So before we're even getting started, I'm impressed. So definitely make sure to stick around because I've got a ton more content for you guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you.